Hi, I'm Phil the Practical Gardener. I want to show you a little tip that I use when I want to maintain large pot plants on a terrace or a patio. I wanted to move this large pot plant recently and in a moment I'll show you what it was like underneath it. But first of all, before I do that, I want to show you a large plant that a friend had on his terrace and show you the result when I moved it. Because the pot was sitting directly on the paving, it has left stains and a ring which are unsightly and hard to remove. Most ceramic terracotta, concrete or wooden pots or planters have got limited drainage. As this pot was directly on the surface, this point had become clogged with detritus from the potting media or animal or plant life. This compromised the drainage and that could affect the health of the potted plants. This could have been easily avoided. As you can see, the narrow space between the underside of the pot and the patio surface was an ideal refuge for a range of small animal pests, in this case, earthworms and ants. However, wood lice or slaters, slugs and millipedes and other insects can also be harbored here. Some of these will use the area as a base for attacking the plant. A 20 to 30 millimeter gap, that is around an inch, would have prevented this by allowing the free movement of drying breezes. It would have been hard to get under a large pot to remove it. I'm covering how to move large pot plants in another tip. Now, by comparison, I'll show you what happened when I came to move this large pot plant. It had been in the same spot for several years, similar to my friend's one, and I watered it several times per week. This is what the surface looked like after I removed it. A little bit of scale from my limey water, easily removed with white vinegar, otherwise pristine. The difference? I kept the plant on these feet, which I bought from my local garden shop. All of my outdoor plants are kept on feet. So here is the simple solution. Commercial feet, similar to these, can be purchased from garden shops cheaply. Often of oriental design, they are designed to have minimal contact with the ground and yet cradle the pot securely. There's actually a range of types available. They are particularly useful for larger pots. For smaller pots, I simply cut spare terracotta, concrete or ceramic tiles into small squares. I cut these terracotta tiles with a masonry blade on my angle grinder. For smaller pots again, I simply shatter a surplus terracotta pot. I do have to be a little careful with handling these as they have sharp edges. Rubber or plastic feet may be useful if you are concerned about the feet scratching the surface of your patio or deck. Here's another option, if you wish to elevate the pot to display it better, for example among a group of other plants, you can perch it on an upside down pot of similar dimensions. Three to four feet are adequate. If the pot is a heavy one and you want to move it, you can simply move it one way to put two feet under one side then rock it the other way for the remaining one or ones. The feet also help when you need to move it, a large pot. You can put the base of a hand trolley or sack barrow under the bottom of the pot and easily lift and move the pot. You can keep the underneath fairly clean by using a leaf blower. So that's it for this tip. I would be interested if you have any comments about this so feel free to put, uh, put your comments under this and don't forget to subscribe and like this so that you're sure to see my further tips as they become available. Thank you so much for watching this all the way through.